surpassing all kings, powerful and tall, beyond all others, violent, splendid, a wild bull of a man, unvanquished leader, hero in the front lines, beloved by his soldiers, fortress they called him, protector of the people, raging flood that destroys all defenses, two-thirds divine and one-third human, son of King Lugobanda, who became a god, and of the goddess Ninsen, he opened the mountain passes, dug wells on the slopes, crossed the vast ocean, sailed to the rising sun, journeyed to the edge of the world in search of eternal life, and once he found Utenabishtim, the man who survived the great flood and was made immortal. He brought back the ancient forgotten rites, restoring the temples that the flood had destroyed, renewing the statutes and sacraments for the welfare of the people and the sacred land. Who is like Gilgamesh? What other king has inspired such awe? Who else can say, I alone rule, supreme among mankind? The goddess Aruru, mother of creation, had designed his body, had made him the strongest of men, huge, handsome, radiant, perfect. The city is his possession. He struts through it, arrogant, his head raised high, trampling its citizens like a wild bull. He is king. He does whatever he wants, takes the son from his father and crushes him, takes the girl from her mother and uses her, the warrior's daughter, the young man's bride. He uses her. No one dares to oppose him. But the people of Uruk cried out to heaven, and their lamentation was heard. The gods are not unfeeling. Their hearts were touched. They went to Anu, father of them all, protector of the realm of the sacred Uruk, and spoke to him on the people's behalf. Heavenly Father, Gilgamesh, noble as he is, splendid as he is, has exceeded all bounds. The people suffer from his tyranny. The people cry out that he takes the son from, the, from his father and crushes him, takes the girl from her mother and uses her, the warrior's daughter, the young man's bride. He uses her. No one dares oppose him. Is this how you want your king to rule? Should a shepherd savage his own flock? Father, do something quickly before the people overwhelm heaven with their heart-rendering cries. Anu heard them. He nodded his head. Then to the goddess, mother of creation, he called out, Aruru, you are the one who created humans. Now go and create a double for Gilgamesh, his second self, a man who equals his strength and courage, a man who equals his stormy heart, Create a new hero. Let them balance each other perfectly, so that Yorick has peace. When Aruru heard this, she closed her eyes, and what Anu had commanded, she formed in her mind. She moistened her hands. She pinched off some clay. She threw it into the wilderness, kneaded it, shaped it to her idea, and fashioned a man, a warrior, a hero. Ankidu. The brave, as powerful and fierce as the war god Ninurta, hair covered his body. His hair grew thick on his head and hung down to his waist like a woman's hair. He roamed all over the wilderness, naked, far from the cities of men, ate grass with the gazelles, and when he was thirsty, he drank clear water from the water holes, kneeling beside the antelope and deer. One day, a human, a trapper, saw him drinking with the animals at a water hole. The trapper's heart pounded, his face went white, his legs shook. He was numb with terror. The same thing happened a second, a third day. Fear gripped his belly. He looked drained and haggard, like someone who had been on a long, hard journey. He went to his father. Father, I have seen a savage man at the water hole. He must be the strongest in the world, with muscles like rock. I have seen him outrun the swiftest animals. He lives among them, eats grass with gazelles, and when he is thirsty, he drinks clear water from the water holes. I haven't approached him. I am too afraid. He fills in the pits I have dug. He tears out the traps I have set. He frees the animals, and I can catch nothing. My livelihood is gone. Son, in York there lives a man named Gilgamesh. He is king of that city, and the strongest man in the world, they say, with muscles like rock. Go to York. Go to Gilgamesh, tell him what happened, then follow his advice. He will know what to do. He made the journey. He stood before Gilgamesh in the center of York. He told him about the savage man. The king said, Go to the temple of Ishtar. 
and then there for a woman named Shamat, one of the priestesses who give their bodies to any man in honor of the goddess. Take her into the wilderness. When the animals are drinking at the water hole, tell her to strip off her robe and lie there, naked, ready with her legs apart. The wild man will approach. Let her use her love arts. Nature will take its course, and then the animals who knew him in the wilderness will be bewildered and will leave him forever. The trapper found Shamat, Ishtar's priestess, and they went off into the wilderness. For three days they walked. On the third day they reached the water hole. There they waited. For two days they sat as the animals came to drink clear water. Early in the morning of the third day, Ankidu came and knelt down to drink clear water with the antelope and deer. They looked in amazement. The man was huge and beautiful. Deep in Shamat's loins, desire stirred. Her breath quickened as she stared at this primordial being. Look, the trapper said, there he is. Now use your love arts. Strip off your robe and lie there naked with your legs apart. Stir up lust when he approaches. Touch him, excite him, take his breath with your kisses. Show him what a woman is. The animals who knew him in the wilderness will be bewildered and will leave him forever. She stripped off her robe and lay there naked with her legs apart, touching herself. Ankidu saw her and warily approached. He sniffed the air. He gazed at her body. He drew close. Shamat touched him on the thigh, touched his penis and put him inside her. She used her love arts. She took his breath with her kisses, held nothing back and showed him what a woman is. For seven days he stayed erect and made love with her until he had had enough. At last he stood up and walked toward the waterhole to rejoin his animals. But the gazelles saw him and scattered. The antelope and deer bounded away. He tried to catch up, but his body was exhausted. His life force was spent. His knees trembled. He could no longer run like an animal, as he had before. He turned back to Shamat, and as he walked, he knew that his mind had somehow grown larger. He knew things now that an animal can't know. Ankidu sat down at Shamat's feet. He looked at her and understood all words she was speaking to him. Now, Ankidu, you know what it is to be with a woman, to unite with her. You are beautiful like a god. Why should you roam the wilderness and live like an animal? Let me take you to Great Walled York, to the Temple of Ishtar, to the, to the Palace of Gilgamesh, the mighty king, who in his arrogance oppresses the people, trampling upon them like a wild bull. She finished, and Ankadu nodded his head. Deep in his heart he felt something stir, a longing he had never known before, the longing for a true friend. Ankidu said, I will go, Shamat. Take me with you to Great Walled York, to the Temple of Ishtar, to the Palace of Gilgamesh, the Mighty King. I will challenge him. I will shout to his face, I am the mightiest. I am the man who can make the world tremble. I am supreme. Come, said Shamat, let us go to York. I will lead you to Gilgamesh, the mighty king. You will see the great city with its massive wall. You will see the young men dressed in their splendor, in the finest linen and embroidered wool, brilliantly colored with fringed shawls and wide belts. Every day is a festival in York, with people singing and dancing in the streets, musicians playing their lyres and drums, the lovely priestesses standing before the temple of Ishtar, chatting and laughing, flushed with sexual joy and ready to serve men's pleasure in the honor of the goddess, so that even old men are aroused from their beds. You are still so ignorant of life, I will show you Gilgamesh, the mighty king, the hero destined for both joy and grief. You will stand before him and gaze with wonder. You will see how handsome, how virile he is, how his body pulses with erotic power. He is even taller and stronger than you, so full of life force that he needs no sleep. Ankidu, put aside your aggression. Shamash, the sun god, loves him and his mind has been made large by Anu, father of the gods, made large by Enlil, the god of earth, and by Yah, the god of water and wisdom. Even before you came down from the hills, you had come to Gilgamesh in a dream. And she told Ankidu what she had heard.